Well, it's Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Let me know. Tell me a story from the weekend. I want to hear about your weekend, whether it was something cool that you found, something awesome that you flipped, or if you just got into some no good over the weekend. I want to hear about that, too. Hopefully you had some fun. Kim and I sure did. We went out and had an awesome dinner Friday night at a place called Postero, Postero in Hendersonville, North Carolina, about 15 minutes from the house. And it was delicious. That was one of the fun things we did over the weekend. We did a lot of fun stuff. We also got some work done on Saturday. Well, I got some work done on Saturday. I don't think Kim did anything Saturday. Anyway, we got 50, uh, we have a total of 17 orders going out today. Um, 15 of those are eBay and Poshmark orders. Two of them are coffee orders, by the way. Get your coffee in. We got fresh coffee. It was delivered to the front door on Thursday. Medium roast, light roast. It's fair trade. It's organic. It's delicious. If you're on TikTok, you can just click right up there. Go to the uh, icon that says shop. You might have a good deal and free shipping in there. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, there's a link down below. Or you can go to chris at peak.com. Get you some rad merch. Get you some delicious coffee. But mostly, thanks for hanging out. We're going to ship out some orders. If you have questions about reselling or shipping, this is a great place to ask because not only do I have some answers for you, there's even smarter people here in the chat. We got six, 86 people over on TikTok. We got four people on YouTube and Facebook also. So great place to ask questions, great place to share your wins, challenges, struggles, all that. We're live most mornings, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. What's up, Mother Nature Show? Chemo's in the house. Kit Kat. Tried alligator for the first time this weekend. How did they prepare it? I like alligator. It tastes like chicken. I'm drinking Peak Blend in Shy Tumblr right now. Crushing life over there. Casey, weekend was awesome. Nicole Kendrick paid up for Lions tickets for our team to stay in the locker room. Paid up for Lions tickets for our team to stay in the locker room. Lion fan life. You literally went in the locker room like yesterday, that game that they got smoked. Like the game was over basically in the first quarter. But that sounds like a really cool experience. Besides that, my team got smoked. Well, not really smoked, but my team got beat last night too. Miami. I was looking forward to that game all freaking weekend, man. Chris had us waiting like a celebrity. Now I just forgot to hit the chat button over there. Um, he is late. I've been live on TikTok, um, but we had to pull orders first, so. Been flipping a lot of Vineyard Vines winter items like vest and long sleeves. Love that. Thank you for sharing your wins there. Kids first Taekwondo tournament this weekend. Nice. How did they do? They have fun though. doesn't matter whether they won or lost. They have fun. They learned something. Took my son to Houston for the weekend for a concert. Nice. Hanging with friends from Washington for four days with pool time. Crushing it. Went to Minnesota and saw some amazing fall tree colors. Stunning. Love to hear that. Love the fall foliage. It's beautiful here in Asheville, North Carolina right now. This weekend was beautiful, packed with tourists. The weekend before was beautiful, packed with tourists. Bring the tourists on. It's good for the economy. Barry D, yeah. I yeah, I hear you on that, brother. Good morning, Missy. Good morning, Double D. Appreciate everybody raiding in from, from Blue Collar Mike. Laurel Creek is in the house, my friend from Banner Elk. How are you? Did I tell you... Laurel Creek, did I tell you that I was up in, uh, that we went up, I told you that, right? Last weekend we were up in, in your neck of the woods. We went to a place called LP on Main. Have you been there? Did we talk about this already? Sometimes I forget. Son-in-law gave me two boxes of nice clothes to sell on consignment, made her a cash offer instead. Yes. People love that fast cash. We didn't come to win that game. Yeah. You guys, you all got smoked in that game. 30 orders of the, I hope you had fun though. It sounds like you're in the locker room, which is crazy. Uh, 30 orders of the weekend. The eBay gods are happy. Nice, Dang Varmint. Let's go. If you're not following Dang Varmint, by the way, sneaky, sneaky, sneaky good uh, content over on TikTok about reselling and stuff. Really like cool, fun, personal, awesome sense of humor. I got turned on to like Dang Varmint like just a couple weeks ago and his content is really, really good and he pumps it out. So Dang Varmint, click on his name, give him a follow. Um, a smart guy, but just like funny, entertaining. It's like refreshing content. Um, I, I like it. Maybe you'll like it too. My little got an award because he crushed it. My older took first beginner, in beginner sparring. That's awesome. Wow, they had a great weekend at that tournament. We went to Charlotte yesterday. Eat. Trees looking beautiful on the way. Nice, Casey. So you're getting some uh, foliage down in the Piedmont as well. Baseball, whoever wins tonight goes to the World Series. Crazy, right? So it's, it's tonight, Houston, game seven, right? Houston Rangers. Where are they playing? I guess they're playing... Did Houston end up getting home field in that? Are they, are they going to be in Houston tonight? And I think it, are both games tonight? Is game six for the NL tonight too? Is that like your local team? Uh, the Dolphins are not my local team, but I was born in Southeast Florida, so I was raised as a Dolphins fan. I had to break up a big barroom brawl on Saturday. I think one of my fingers is broken. Crap, that sucks. 
that's how life is a uh, life ten and bar, right? I've had a my fair share of uh, of those sorts of scenarios. I hope your finger's not broken. That's a bummer because you make money with your hands. Jeez, do you promote eBay listings? I do between two and six percent, depending on the sell through rate of that item. They're playing here. Okay, cool. Game six for National League two, and that one's in Philadelphia. So a lot of baseball tonight. We could probably got Monday night football. Is the Monday night football game any good tonight? That cool. LPM Maine is very nice. It is. Yeah, we had a great time at LPM Maine. That was uh, that's really good, sophisticated food for Banner Elk, Coral Creek. We went to Charlotte yesterday. What did I miss here? System law. Now the Lions might as well not have left the locker room. Yeah, exactly. It was algae on a stick at a festival. Okay. So I guess it was probably grilled, maybe, or did they deep fry it? Do you promote your listings? I just want to say thank you for not blaring loud music during your lives. You're welcome, KSW. But I would be blaring loud music if I could. But I'm live on Facebook and YouTube, too. And you can't play um, music on those places. You get copyright strikes. Okay, we got to go. Arrived at our destination. Have a good day, Tricia. Sorry I missed that comment. If I missed a comment or a question, just let me know. I didn't mean to miss it. It just happens. Yes, baseball. Everyone's... See, I didn't know that sport. They don't play it here. Yeah, it's kind of like cricket, just better. Mother Nature show. It's like cricket, but better. That's what baseball is. But promoting listing, Chris, is it whatever per percentage you select is of the overall sale price? Correct. Yep. So say I um let's do like a nice easy number. Say I promoted at two percent an item, and that item sold for twenty dollars, including shipping and taxes. If it sold for twenty dollars, including shipping and taxes, then I would pay uh what did i say on that two percent so i would pay 40 cents in the additional fees on top of the regular fees it's whatever rate you set of that you control that rate and it did taste like chicken yeah yeah deep fried it's in the south that's right peak blend keeps me regular that's awesome i need i guess i need to drink more of it went to the music festival had my best weekend on ebay 12 orders let's go nba starts tonight too yes i'm pumped about nba get to watch Wembyana. Wembyama. Wemby Yama, the French kid from the Spurs, drinking my Chrissy Peak coffee. Lola's up early in the morning. She's hanging out with us. What's up, Lola? Mad love. All right, let's do some work. Let's do some work. Y'all are like chitty chatting. This isn't fun and games, y'all. This is work. This is serious business. Even though I'm wearing sweatpants and wearing the same outfit that I wore yesterday, this is serious business here out of my 16 by 14 office here in my little modest house. Christina, good sales this morning. Good weekend, too. Seven sales. Nice. I found two pairs of new attacks. Cool pants this weekend. Paid 15 each, but it should be a great return. That will definitely be a great return. I found a Guinness Carhartt collab hoodie. That's sick. I never found anything like that. It's crazy. eBay's just trying everything to get more money. It's not a level playing field anymore. It's basically who promotes. Yeah, but that promoting rate, they've been doing that for like five years. It's not like a newfangled thing. They've been doing that forever. I shouldn't say forever, but five years is a long time. It's not like a new thing. All right. Which are we shipping first, eBay or Poshmark? Uh, whichever one gets to three votes first, eBay or Poshmark. Let me know down below in the chat where are we start. eBay or Poshmark, eBay or Poshmark. We got one vote for eBay from Laurel Creek. We got another vote for eBay. We got another vote for eBay. Okay, well, that's it. Sorry, neglect. All right, we're done. Vote's over. That was fun. Vote's over, Thrifty Mama. Generous, the vote's over. Bobby, vote's over. Aaron, vote's over. Settle down, Mother Nature. The vote's over. Your votes are important, though. All right, let's go. eBay. What do we have on eBay? Let's get a count here. That's Poshmark. That's Poshmark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go. We're going to ship all these orders through eBay's shipping screen. We're locked in. We're ready to go. Paisley loves her. It's thing is my cardio bag. Problem is Nicole kind of took it over. Come on, Nicole. Sorry, I'm old and type slow. Recount. I demand a recount. I like pie. <laughs> okay. Let's go, internet. You can do it. You can maybe do it. All right. The first one we're going to do is this Eddie Bauer goose down. Nothing fancy here. Holy internet.
Well, while that's trying to load up, I'll tell you about Friday's dinner at Postero. Kim got the, uh, what did she get? She got the pan roasted salmon with curry, butternut, squash puree, garlic sauteed kale, beet, and green apple chutney with cardamom. And I got the steak, sliced eight ounce bistro take steak with bistro tender with fig demi glaze, demi glace, sorry, roasted delicas, delicata, delicata squash and Brussels sprouts walnut relish. It was delicious. That was at Postero downtown. Hendersonville, we walked in. We only had to wait for like 20 minutes. It was like 6.45 too. I don't know how we only had to wait for like 20 minutes. We just got lucky. Because the tourists are out in force. We will get drunk watching the game chemo. There you go. Card game is the best. What do you, what did you drink with it? I had a, um, I had an old fashioned. Kim had uh, some kind of white wine. I don't remember what it was called. All right, did this load? It did load. So this first order is going to Jane. Wow, the internet is so bad today. Unbelievable. Kim, can you kick the router or something? The internet is terrible. There you go. I can hear her like hitting it. <laughs> All right, that worked. <laughs> All right, the Zeddy Bauer vest is going from Asheville, North Carolina to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Zeddy Bauer, women's size, large. It had like a little flaw on the front, so I marked it down. I think I listed it for $19. Somebody sent me an offer for 16 bucks. It sold in less than 24 hours. How much does this go away? Where's my scale? This is going to go at a 15 ounce rate. I'm going to put it in a 15 by 12 poly bag. Everyone gets a thank you card. Thank you, Jane. All in. She paid $22 for this. Just had like a little like mark on the front. So I marked it down. Which otherwise would have been like a $25 item. I priced it at 19. So this is going to ship for at a 15 ounce rate. It's going to go USPS ground advantage. That's going to cost us something. $6.22 going from Asheville to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Oh my gosh, the internet is so bad today. Everyone gets one, and here I felt special. Hey, what's up, Ethan Blair? All right, first item out the door. I paid five bucks. It sold for sixteen dollars plus shipping. The shipping cost on that's going to be six dollars and twenty cents. $6.22 on that one. Pop that into Jason's, Jason Hayes's awesome reseller spreadsheet. At the end of the day, I made $7.60 on that jacket, but it was flawed. So that's what happens. You just mark it down. I still made profit. It sold in less than 24 hours. Next up is a pair of Link Soul jogger sweatpants. I'm not sure how much I paid. I bought these in a bulk buy uh, on whatnot from another seller. I bought a whole bunch of new tags, Link Soul. Definitely made profit on the bundle. Probably paid like 60 bucks for a bundle of five. This sold for $39 plus $8.95 shipping. I love this brand, Link Soul. 
Those are also going to go at a 15 ounce rate. Going to go in a 15 by 12 poly bag. Thank you card for Ethan. Thank you, Ethan. Not Ethan Blair, but Ethan. So $39 plus $8.95 shipping is what the buyer paid on these. Internet's so bad, I might just have to stop the live stream so I can actually get some freaking work done. Love and peace. Kick it harder, Cam. Exactly. Uh, have a great day, Laurel Creek. Appreciate you jumping in. Uh, six bucks is what it's going to cost in the shipping label. I had like five hairs turned gray just waiting for that freaking label to print out. Still not printed out. one more chance if it don't work then i'm gone thanks ethan all right next up is this pendleton wool jacket this is going to jenny this sold in 36 hours I listed it for 89 dollars. it had a couple flaws on it and it sold for full asking price one of these wool, like herringbone, overcoat jackets, Pendleton. I'll show you the tag. Here's the tag right there. Had a couple moth, like five moth holes on it. I noted all those in the in the item title, in the description, and in the photos. And this is going to go. Let's see what the weight is on it. It's only going to Atlanta, which is a good thing because it. This is going to weigh two pounds, eleven ounces. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this in a box without going over three pounds, but let's just see if there's going to be a difference in price. If it goes in a bag, it'll be two pounds, 11, two pounds, 12 ounces. Let's see what that pops up as. Uh, that'll be 726. If it jumps up over three pounds, Oh my gosh, the internet. It'll be $7.48 or priority will be cheaper, $7.20 priority, which means I can put it in a box. So we're going to do that. And I think it's going to go in a shoe box is how we're going to do this. Yeah, that's what it's going to do. To put it in one of these 19 by 14 poly bags. Because this is a big old jacket. I paid $10 for this jacket at a thrift store and it's out the door for $89 plus shipping. I 
think it's going to fit in the shoebox. This is going to go priority. It's only going to Atlanta. About three and a half hours away from here. If it was going to, say, Seattle, the shipping would have cost a lot more than $7. Seven twenty USPS priority at a four pound rate. Your wife is the boss. There you go. Boom, nice sale. Guess I'm only nine to ten hours away from me. Nice. Nothing worse than crappy Wi Fi. I feel your pain. Yeah, mountain internet. This is the second internet service provider that we had. First one, I just couldn't get any internet. This one just depends on the day. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Either way, thank you, Jenny. Nice sale. Quick one, too. If that shirt was, or if that jacket was in better condition, it could have sold for 150, 160, 170. This time of year, they go crazy. Got a pair of mountain khaki pants. These are going out to Chris. Nice name. Size 38 by 32. They had a little wear on them, so I priced them down a bit. I typically price these at about $25 plus shipping. Um, these are the ones, they have like a reinforced cuff. They're really nice, like outdoor, kind of tough, rugged khakis. I like this brand. And I priced these at $20 because they had just some like uh, some wear on them, some fraying. Let's see, this is going to go to Tarboro, North Carolina. So this is not going far. So I'm going to ship this regular priority and not in a padded flat rate. The padded flat rate envelope would cost me $8.30. This is going to be $7.20 shipping at regular priority because it's not going far. I don't know where Tarboro, New Hampshire, or North Carolina is. So we're going to put this in a, a USPS priority tieback envelope. They're free at USPS.com. This ships based on weight and distance. It's a good example of why it's smart not just reflexively put jeans and pants, things that are over a pound in a padded flat rate, because sometimes you'll save a dollar ten if it's not going very far. So seven dollars and twenty cents on the shipping instead of eight thirty in the padded. Chemo and Mother Nature show. You are like two peas in a pod over there on YouTube. You're funny. Google, I went to this morning already set up for Valentine's Day. They have Valentine's Day stuff out right now. It's kind of crazy. That's wild to me. Let me know down below in the chat. Do you already have your Christmas decorations up? I know that's like a thing. Let me know down below in the chat. All right, more eBay orders. We got a carbon to cobalt. Let's go to double check. This is the right one. I listed a few of these this weekend. Yeah, that's the right one. Carbon to cobalt, I'll show you the tag. It's a good time of year to be selling these, by the way, too. 
nice like soft cotton shirt carbon to cobalt that's the brand that's been selling this brand for years and years it doesn't sell quite like it used to which is it's common with a lot of these um you know, less common brands as they get bigger and their distribution increases but this one sold uh within 48 hours and it sold for full asking price 22 dollars plus shipping it's going to go at a 12 ounce rate it's going to it's going to an air force base or a um i'm not sure if it's air force but it's going to a military base so that means i gotta fill out this little form here I guess I don't really need to fill out anything. It's already all filled out for me. Just gonna check the box. It says I have read the shipping pro prohibitions. This is gonna go USPS ground advantage. It's gonna be four dollars and eighty-one cents. All I had to do with that customs form is literally check a box. Everything else is already filled in. The weight, the price, the country of origin, all that stuff. So super easy. This will go in a nine by twelve poly bag. Oh man, they make the label all stupid. Ugh, they don't make it four by six on these. That's so dumb. It doesn't have to be this way. So how am I going to do this? I'm going to screenshot this. This is dumb. eBay can do better than this. I print these out on pirate ship all the time with the customs declaration and it fits on a four by six, but eBay, come on, man. I'm just going to take a screenshot of this and I will print it out in a little, little bit of a shortcut here. This is what I used to have to do on all my Mercari labels. See if this works. Yep, worked. It ain't perfect, but it worked. I would agree with that label. Don't let kings know. An APO, yep. So silly. Because on pirate ship, this is easy. It just fits it right on the four by six, but. I did it anyway, it just took me a couple extra steps. That's going to let's go into Juan. Thank you, Juan. Appreciate your order. Out the door for you. Four dollars and eighty one cents is the shipping label there. All right, next up on eBay is Ralph Warren flannel. This is a good sale. Brand new with tags, Ralph Warren label, or uh, Ralph Warren flannel. Vintage coats and overalls. Nice, Brent. How are you, Brent? What is up? Ralph Warren flannel. It's like a solid red color, and it's the tags are... 
tucked in, but brand new with tags. You can see the little tag holder right there. $59, I think $59 plus shipping. And again, Saturday, I got an offer, like right around noon time, I got an offer for $42 on this. I didn't have offers turned on. They sent me a message with an offer anyway. And I said, no, thank you. And then it sold uh, literally maybe an hour later. It sold for full asking price, $59 to somebody else. I checked to see if it was the same person. It was not. It's going on a 9 by 12 poly bag. It's going to ship at a 15 ounce rate. It's going out to Palo. Palo paid full asking price. 59 plus... And this is a thrift store find, two, five bucks. Going to Georgia, $59 plus $5.95 shipping. So they're all in for $65 or $64.95. It's only going to Beaufort, Georgia. So that's going to be $5.93 on the shipping label. I'm not on eBay, but yes, planning shops on eBay and Posh this week. I'm not on eBay yet. But Brant, what do you sell on if you're not on eBay or Posh? And what kind of stuff do you sell? I had two last week, annoying. Yeah, I don't know why that's so hard. Hey, Lisa, thank you for the follow. Welcome aboard. Let me know if you have questions. We got 70 people in the chat on TikTok, we got nine others that are on Facebook and YouTube or live on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. A lot of smart people in the chat. So if you have questions about reselling, I probably don't know the answer, but somebody else probably does. Where do you make most of your sales? I'm not having much luck with eBay. Um, this weekend was, I think, let me just do a quick count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I had seven on eBay and eight on Poshmark. And two on TikTok shop. Sorry that you're not having luck uh, on eBay. What types of stuff are you selling? Blessings in disguise. And um, how long have your items been sitting? Etsy. Oh, okay, cool. We sell what we find. Rural farming area. Gotcha. Etsy. So do you do clothing and that sort of thing on Etsy too? I hear that can be a really tough game, but I've never sold on Etsy, so I don't know. I have a steel toe boots, new without box and men's formal jacket. So those two items, how long have those two items been listed? Another eBay order. This is a Southern Tide Intercoastal. I like Southern Tide as a resell brand. Intercoastal is one of those models that sells really well. So there it is. Let's see if you can see it there. Intercoastal on that second tag. So that means it's a nylon spandex blend. So these sell a little bit better. This sold for a full asking price, $25. Uh, I listed this at some point last week and it sold, um, when did this sell? Yesterday, sold Sunday, first thing in the morning. Sold really early, it sold at 5.36 in the morning on Sunday. Where are these people? They're in New Jersey, so they were just up really early shopping for an intercoastal Southern Tide. That's a size extra large on that too. Twenty-five dollars plus shipping out the door. So to go on a nine by twelve poly mailer, you put this label right through eBay using their shipping discount. USPS ground advantage. This is going to Stephen. He gets a handwritten thank you card. So does everybody. Thanks, Stephen, for paying rent this month. Actually, it was what rents due in seven days. What? Okay. Okay. Four dollars and eighty-one cents on the shipping label. Uh, I have a lot more, but not listing much until I have luck. The boots have been listed about a month, three times. Um, so the average item, I sell mostly clothing. I'm like ninety-five percent clothing. And the average listing for me sells in somewhere between 70 and 80 days. Historically, I've listed on 
six platforms, but now we've shrunk it down just to eBay and Poshmark. So 60, 70 days, including cross listing, including uh, I promote my items. If you check out my eBay story, you'll see that I, I use photo room to use white backgrounds on all my photos. I put measurements in the descriptions of all my clothing items. So I kind of take like all those extra steps and that way I still average 70 to 80 days. So if you've had a couple things listed for a month, to me, you haven't even like given those items like a full life cycle, like a chance. If something hasn't been listed to me for for 70 or 80 days, you haven't even given it a chance in my opinion. So probably just like a dose of patience. It's a very, very competitive market, um, very, very competitive market to sell used clothing uh, online. There's a lot of people who are doing it. You probably have a lot of competition for those same items. So um, yeah, there's also seasonality when it comes to clothing too. So sometimes you have something sit for a hundred days because it's a heavy flannel and you listed it in April and it doesn't sell until September or October because that's when people buy that sort of stuff. So people do buy winter stuff year round, but they don't buy as much of it. Um, they don't tend to spend as much money on it in the summer. They're looking for better, better deals. Um, and typically the premium stuff is what's going to sell. The saturated market stuff, the you know your mediocre brands, those aren't going to sell if they're winter items in the summer the premium stuff year round more competition now than 15 years ago, hundred percent more competition now than when I first started doing this, like, uh, five years ago, um, a lot more competition used to sell years ago and almost everything would sell the first time. But like you said, yeah, it's just a different world right now. The markets, it's like a lot of market. Think about how many markets have changed, not just like the re the clothing reselling market. Think about how, like, you know, all, all the you know, real estate market, think about how that's changed. Think about the stock market and how much that's changed in 15 years to expect that the used clothing market is the same as 15 years ago. And I'm not picking on you, uh, but to expect that it's the same as 15 years ago, you know, would be a little bit crazy because like every other market has changed pretty dramatically. Um, so, and we just had a really interesting, like last, I mean, interesting is probably an understatement, but the last three years, like think about the stuff that's gone on in the world, supply chain issues, inflation, that little like pandemic thing. That's those things have impacted like every market in some really crazy, weird ways. Um, and there's a lot of people right now who are not do, doing so great financially because inflation's just crushing people. Rent's going way up. Wages aren't coming up with it. So people aren't really spending as much as they have in years past. We're seeing a full year of really high inflation, like we're finally wearing people down and inflation for a month, whatever, right? Inflation for two months. Okay. That sucks. Inflation for six months. Oh man, this is starting to hurt inflation for over a year. High inflation. That's what it starts taxing your bank account over time. And it wears you down. And we're seeing that with a lot of people right now. So it's a competitive marketplace, maybe more than ever, because you have so many people who are selling now. Uh, and now you have a, a kind of like this constriction of, of spending because people, you know, everything just costs more money right now and their wages aren't going up. Their boss ain't giving them a raise. Get a real job, kid. Get a real job, kid. That's what Jane would tell us. eBay's all shipped out. Let's pivot over to Poshmark, y'all. Thank you for the worsties. Also more customers online than in the past. Very true. More competition since I started in the spring. There you go. Thank you, Biggie, for the, the gifts. I appreciate that. Same, thank you, South Texas, for the gifts. I think there are more sellers than buyers here on eBay UK. First time ever. Well said, Chris. It's just a tough market. You got to weather the storm. You got to figure it out. You know, there's going to be there's going to be up and down markets in any business. You could say, well, whatever. The used clothing business, man, it's really hard right now. I'm going to go flip and go to something else. Well, you're going to go to something else, and maybe that's doing really well now, but maybe next spring that's not doing so well, right? So if you just flip markets and never really learn, like if you're always changing your business and never really learn like the intricacies of it, right now is where when, when things are tough, when competition is hard, this is where you're going to raise your game. This is where you're going to try new things. You're going to change your pricing strategy. You're going to upgrade your photo quality. Um, you're going to be like thinking, like rethinking, what are the items that I'm going to pick up to resell? That hard stuff happens like right now. This is the hard learning. And if you give up right now and you just say like, you know what? The market's like tough right now. I was listening to that bearded guy, Chris, and he was telling me that the market's hard right now. I'm going to switch to some other thing where the market isn't really hard. Well, you just missed out on all the lessons that come from the, you know, the dark seasons, the slow seasons. That's, you know, to me, this is where you're going to learn your game. And some of you who had just started earlier this year, or maybe you started last year, shoot, maybe you started three years ago and you're getting a little bit beaten down by the 2023 market. This is where you're going to learn. 
this is where you're going to learn. If you're paying attention, um, if you're hungry, if you're consistent, if you keep your head up, this is where you're going to learn the most. And this is where you're going to crush. So there's going to be up and down markets in any business. And the secret to success that a lot of people don't want to talk about, a lot of entrepreneurs don't want to talk about is cons consistency. It's weathering the storm. It's making it work. The learning is going to happen more right now than when sales are really good. When sales are really good, you don't learn so much, right? Because you're just listing it and it's moving and it's selling and everything's great. This is like when you're kind of like, it's not going so well. This is when you learn. You got to stick with it in any, in any business. All right. Poshmark sale, two Carhartt jeans. I'll tell you exactly how many days. I haven't been telling you how many days things have been selling. I should do that more. I haven't been doing that today. These two Carhartt jeans, I listed them. Shoot, I don't know when I listed them. I didn't jot that down. I have a feeling I picked these up. Um, I think it was June or July. So kind of middle of the summer. So we're probably talking about, probably talking like 90 days to sell this. So Carhartt in a really big size, size 54. Carhartt's a great brand. Size 54 is a great size. I lotted them together because they're the same model and all that. They still took about 90 days to sell. And it still took an offer of 10% off that I sent to a liker on this to get them sold. So $35 out the door. I paid 10 bucks for these two pairs of Carhartts combined, five a piece. These are going Poshmark. So I'm going to get a 1095 box for these. Man, you already got a rant out of me, and it's early. This is a USPS Priority 1095 box. This is one of the boxes I always keep in stock from USPS. Picked up an entire large sear, an extra large Sears jean jacket. Nice. Great time of year to be selling denim jackets. That market's not hurting right now, I'll tell you that much. Variety is the spice of life. Bad times don't last. There you go. Mother Nature Show, I knew you'd have something inspirational to say there. Appreciate you, bud. Our friend from London. These fit in there like a glove. These car hearts are going out to Richard. Thank you, Richard. You're paying the mortgage this month. Therefore, you get a handwritten thank you note. What's the shirt hanging behind you? I'll show you that in a second. Good morning, Husky Mama. I wonder how Jane is doing these days. I hope Jane's doing well. Gave me some much needed inspiration. What was that, like a month ago? Hope she's doing well. I appreciate her inspiration. All right. I love shipping on Poshmark because everything's flat rate up to five pounds. Super easy. I don't have to weigh this. I'm not print out this label. There it is. And everything goes priority. So people get their orders nice and quick, which is good for customer satisfaction. I like it. Thank you, Richard. Orders going out today. You'll probably get those Wednesday. Morning. How was Kim's job hump gun? I got some updates for you. Shy, it was good to see you in, in, your, uh, in your live just a little bit last night. Sorry, I just popped in briefly. but So this is an, a Nietzsche. A Nietzsche, and I know there's a bunch of people in the chat. They're going to say, no, that's pronounced NYC. Listen, Puffy owns this brand, P. Diddy. He calls it a Nietzsche, and he's the owner. So I'm going to call it a Nietzsche, too. You can say it's NYC all you want. But look at that. All over football. We're going to run that on whatnot tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. For a buck. It's a size large. It's really like a size large tall because the Nietzsche is a streetwear brand. So that's like it's a longer shirt. I'll tell you how much it it's probably like 34 or 35 length. Look at that. 30, huh, 34 and a half. There you go. Um, so a longer shirt, size like large tall, basically, all over a football player's really cool shirt. I like picking up some of Nietzsche. And don't give me that NYC smack talk. Good morning, everyone in the chat. Stay strong. Appreciate you, Biggie. What a nice guy. All right, two coffees down the hatch. We moved on to some sparkly waters. We got more Poshmark to ship. We got seven more Poshmark orders. We got 
two TikTok shop orders. Let's go ahead and do a TikTok shop order right now. My my friends, Dory and Chemo, I think you're in the chat. You got two bags of medium peak blend and they're ground. So you got these coming out to you. Thank you so much, Chemo and Dory. Here's a TikTok shop order. I think you got a good deal on these two. Let me just double check. I think y'all got a good deal. Yep. So two bags going out the door, $19.18 and free shipping on this. So these are $14.99 a bag. And basically the second bag was uh, was $4.19. So you paid full price for one bag. The second bag was $4.19. And you got free shipping on these going out the door to my friends, Chemo and Dory. Thank you so much. We'll get these out priority to you. This is the... Um, it's available in both ground and whole bean. You can also get French press ground. I have that available too. It's roasted fresh every Thursday. It's fair trade. It's organic. I don't know if anyone else is selling fair trade and organic coffee on TikTok. I haven't seen anybody who's doing it. Maybe somebody is. That's a big deal. Fair trade and organic. And roasted fresh every Thursday. I don't know if anyone else is in that game. If they are, I wish them luck too. A little taste of uh, the mountains here in Asheville too. These are, it's technically from Black Mountain, North Carolina, which is 15 minutes due east of Asheville. Beautiful town. Kim and I really love Black Mountain. This coffee here, this roast, these beans are from Chiapas, Mexico, which is the southernmost state in Mexico. So right down by the by the Guatemala border in the highlands. Coffee grows best in the tropics in high elevation. It likes high humidity and high elevation. That's where you get the world's best coffee. Thank you so much. South Texas Resales, Dory and Chemo. Good morning, 99. What's the difference between regular grind and French press grind? Great question. The regular grind is gonna be like a medium grind, and that's gonna be most appropriate for if you use a drip coffee maker, like a traditional coffee maker, or if you use a Keurig, like those K-cups, and you get one of those reusable K-cups, and you put the fresh coffee into that little like K-cup dispenser, that's the medium grind. French press grind is a coarse grind. So it's if you use a French press to make your coffee, you want a coarse grind because you don't want the, the, the coffee beans themselves, the ground coffee, you don't want it to go through the mesh screen on the French press. So that's the difference. French press is French press grind is coarse ground. Same thing. My daughter was there teaching English. How about it? That's cool. I never drank coffee. I should be ashamed of myself. Yeah, y'all y'all are tea people out there in London. Ain't that right? Is it even really calm? I guess you have coffee shops and stuff out there. I need to go to TJ Maxx tomorrow and go mad. Y'all have TJ, TK? I, I'm thinking you said TJ. Y'all have TJ Maxx in, uh, in London? That's kind of cool. I just never really thought about that. Show your French press. Uh, it's in the other room, but I can show you a French press. This is our backup press right here. That's a French press. So when you brew it, you put the coffee in the bottom. And you put the water in the bottom. And then you put this thing on the top. It's got a little mesh screen right there. And then you put this on top. You let it sit in there for anywhere between three and eight minutes. Then you press this plunger down. And that separates the beans. It pushes them all to the bottom or the ground beans all the way to the bottom. And then your coffee sits there in the top and you pour it out the top. That's a French press. So you want a coarse grind if you're using French press. One of these right here would be like 15 to 20 bucks on Amazon. The one we have is called the Gator Press. It's one of those stainless steel insulated presses. So it keeps the coffee nice and hot. It also makes it so the extraction or the brewing process, the, the, uh, the water stays hotter. So you just get a better extraction. But this is a nice one too. This is like a Bodum or something. Just a cheap one, little glass one. It'll make you a great cup of coffee for 15 or 20 bucks. And it's way easier than you think. You need to have a coffee talk and show. Yeah, I keep talking about me doing that. Just need to, that's part of the plan for me hiring somebody is so that I can have some time to devote to those sorts of things. For sure. 
for sure. Good morning, Kim B is in the house. All right, what were we doing? We were shipping out TikTok shop orders. Thank you, Kimo and Dory. We got another order. This is going out to Keisha. Thank you, Keisha. Another repeat customer of the coffee, which tells me we're doing something right. By the way, my partner who brews this coffee, it's a um, it's a coffee roaster that's in Black Mountain, North Carolina. It's called Dynamite Roasting. This is a bag of whole bean medium roast right here. We also have a light roast if you're interested in that. Here's a medium. This is the whole bean going out to Keisha. This is them on the back right here. Dynamite Roasting Company, Black Mountain, North Carolina. They've won Western North Carolina's best coffee roaster 11 years in a row, including this year. They won that award this year back in August. And that's from WNC Magazine, which does those awards every year. They do like best restaurant, best chef, best, best everything. Best uh, theater, best venue to see music, you know, all that kind of stuff. And 11 years in a row, they've won Best Coffee Roaster. So I couldn't ask for a better partner. Thank you, Keisha. Appreciate you supporting my tiny little business over here. You get a bag. Medium roast, whole bean coming out to you. This will have tasting notes. It'll have a mild, mild spice, just a hint of spice. And milk chocolate is the prevailing flavor. Again, it's not flavored coffee. That's just a natural flavor of the beans in the roast. Definitely a prevailing milk chocolate flavor too. Not dark chocolate, like you know how it gets like bitter, especially those dark roasts. That's not this. It's like that kind of sweet milk chocolate. And it's not overwhelming. Again, it's not flavored coffee. You don't do flavored coffee over here. You can flavor it at home if you like, but this is fair trade organic. Boom, going out the door. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. Boom, going out the door. Thank you, Keisha. I appreciate your support. Need to have a coffee talk. I have an acrylic blanket with your name on it, Crispy. Huh. That's weird. I never I never made any blanket merches. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the coffee business. I think you know how much I love the coffee business and how much I uh, appreciate y'all supporting that business. I think it's the best month of coffee that you can get. And that's the whole idea. It was literally Kim and I's favorite coffee before we even started getting into the coffee business dynamite roasting is what we drank and then they were like yeah we can make you your own coffee <laughs> so here we are the story was a little bit different than that it was a little bit more detailed but that's the short of it we reached out to our favorite coffee roaster and said hey would you work with us and they're like absolutely so here we go all right and it's with great pride that i bring you western north carolina's best coffee all right a pair of bonobos going out the door this is the second time I've sold these. The first time they sold on eBay, the buyer said they didn't like the color, even though the photos were really, really good on this. The color is like spot on in the photos. They said they didn't like the color, so they returned it. That's fine. Now it's sold on Poshmark. And guess what? There's no returns on Poshmark for didn't like the color. So these ones are going out the door this time, and they ain't coming back. Poshmark shipping super easy. You're going to use a Tyvek, USPS priority Tyvek mailer here. One of these jobs free at usps.com <coughs> excuse me handwritten thank you card to elaine thank you elaine thanks for supporting my tiny little business been doing this for five years more than five years every single order gets a handwritten thank you card that's just the way i roll the way i see it these people pay my rent i like having my rent paid i like having a roof over my head that thank you card can make them smile, can maybe cheer up their day a little bit. And that's great, because I got a roof over my head because of these people. It's good for me too. I think filling out that thank you card and writing it and just daily expressions of gratitude, I think is just a healthy thing for me too. One of my mentors, Jerry Posner, just talks all the time, every single day, he talks about the power of gratitude. And uh, that's been built into me. He's been a mentor of mine for, gosh, maybe 15 or more years now. It's just built into me, this idea of gratitude. Hey, Central Illinois reseller is in the house. Good morning. Just making sure you got your package, man. I did. Yeah, thank you, brother. Um, does your uh, does the shipping stuff, does, do you not see the, you can't check the orders? I'm just messing with you, Joel. I'm just messing with you. But thank you for checking in. 
Uh, another Poshmark order going out the door. This is a whatnot order. Again, there's only certain people that I order off whatnot now, people that I know that are taking their business really seriously and are being really careful and not doing random pulls. This is a Mizzen and Main that I purchased off whatnot, and it has five holes in the back. So I listed it for $15, accepted an offer of $12 on this, which is much less than what I paid for it on whatnot. Losing money on it. But Joel, I buy stuff from Joel. He sent me a package. I got it on Saturday it came in. I buy from Joel because I know he takes great care in listing his items and making sure that they are not flawed. That's one thing I really appreciate about Joel. He also brings really good inventory. Joel, when's your next whatnot, brother? Let's let people know so people can uh, go support you because you're doing whatnot right, in my opinion, man. You get my support. You see the pain of me spending time just to liquidate this. So 12 bucks for this is in Maine. I listed it on, what day did I list this on? I think I listed this on Friday. Actually, I listed it on Saturday and it sold on Sunday. This is a 24 hour sale. A lot of stuff still sells. I just got to mark the price down. And that's what I did on this one. I still accepted an offer even below that. This shirt would have been Miz in a Maine. This is a 30 to $35 shirt for me. Um, if it wasn't flawed. So I priced it half price and took an offer. It's out the door on Poshmark. Where's that shipping label? He does. He's just, he runs a, he runs a business with a high integrity. And I appreciate that about him. Vote with your dollar, y'all. This is going out to Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. This is going to Garland, Texas. Nice Miz and a main shirt. There are little small pinholes in the back. It's still going to be a nice shirt for somebody. And of course, I listed that item. I put asterisk read in the, in the title. I uh, described the flaws in the description. And then I, I included photos of each of the little pinholes with a pointer, my pen pointing right at it. Just trying to figure out. Why is that person over there in that field? I don't recognize that truck. One of my neighbors, who's also our landlord's field over there. I don't know why I'm holding up my pen. And he's gone. That was strange. He walked out into the field, like felt the grass with his hand, like bent over, felt the grass, and then just like walked out of the field, went back to his car, which is pulled over on the side of the road and drove away. Any more stop sign excitement? No. Youth hunting, huh? You've been asked whatnot for your money back. You should have asked whatnot for your money back. Yeah, Joel has great items. I ordered five items from someone on whatnot and they never sent them. I reached out and they blocked me. Oh my gosh. Well, you can get that uh easily because there's probably no shipping confirmation right so you can just go get them go get your money back look i love whatnot y'all but remember whatnot is not a like it's just a marketplace just like ebay or poshmark right you're buying from a variety of different people in a variety of, of different um levels of integrity and stuff right and like joel ran into it too so it's like you're not just vetting the platform is the platform good or bad whatever like you know, that, that's a tough thing to evaluate. What you're doing is you're vetting the people that you're buying from, right? Are these people taking care? Does this person seem like they're carrying themselves with integrity? Um, are they pulling items out of a bag that they haven't looked over and just running them for auctions? Like, and they haven't even like looked over these items? Or is this person actually put these items in front of photo lights and turned on the photo lights so you can see the flaws a lot easier than like pulling them in a, out of a bag in the dark? Um, so yeah, just vet the people, the platform isn't good or bad. Um, it's the people that you have to evaluate their integrity, not just their integrity, but also like, um, are they an experienced reseller? Do they know what they're doing, right? Like experienced resellers don't want to sell items with flaws to their customers because they know that those items are going to boomerang back. And there's a lot of cost to those things where they're going to have to refund people. So experienced sellers know the pain 
of doing things the wrong way or cutting corners. So they just don't do it uh, by and large. And I think the same goes true for a lot of like content creators too, because like they, I don't know, I can only speak for myself. Like if I send y'all bad stuff, it's I just, it's just not going to work out well for me, right? You're going to come back into this chat and you're going to be mad and you're going to talk to other people about how I'm sending you crap. Like it just doesn't make sense. There's accountability in this sort of thing. So, so typically 70 to 75% of my business on whatnot on any given show is repeat customers. <laughs> so if I have a habit of sending out crap to people, those repeat customers go away um, and then I'm in trouble and the stuff doesn't sell much. Soda this morning for you. I don't drink soda. This is a uh, sparkling water, Christina. Them photo lights will reveal the truth. Yeah. In some of these bags, like when I get stuff from people, sometimes it takes it all the way to the point where I put them in front of the photo lights and I'm like, oh gosh, there's some flaws on this. They should have noticed this. Other times I'm literally pulling these out of the box that they sent me. Um, I could be like in the room in the dark in here and I'm like, holy crap, there's stains on this item or there's a hole in this item or it's all frayed. Like, they knew this, like there's, how did they not, there's no way that they could have like put this into a bag and not notice what I'm noticing pulling out of the bag. And that's where the integrity comes in. All right, let's ship some Poshmark orders, y'all. You know, I get fired up about that, but I just listed last week, 120 items. And a lot of those were whatnot purchases that were flawed. And a lot of them were jeans and uh, jeans and pants, jeans and pants take me a little extra time to, to list because there's more photos and there's more measurements. And flawed items take me more time to list because, again, I have to take more photos and then I have to describe the flaws and stuff. So last week was kind of like a grind of listing, like 120 items that take a long time. If I was just selling like if that was mostly shirts and it was mostly items that weren't flawed, I probably would have got 160 items up last week. But because the flaws and I did a lot of jeans and stuff, it was like a slower process. So I can vent a little bit today. Because last week was just kind of a grind. It's not fun listing those items that are flawed either, you know? It's the, like the least fun part about it. Uh, this sold on Poshmark LL Bean. It's a really cool piece. It's a flannel and it's a hoodie. It's a women's size small flannel hoodie. It's got that classic like green and navy plaid pattern. It's kind of hard to see through the bag there. This sold on Poshmark for a best offer of something. 20, I want to say 22 bucks, but let's confirm that. 23 bucks on, on Poshmark, size small, flannel hoodie, really cool piece. Love selling jeans, like what? What brand do you buy? Haven't found one I really like. What brand do you buy? Oh, we talking about the, the seltzer waters? Um, I, I buy all of them. These ones are water loose. I like to switch them up. I drink a lot of them. So if I buy too much of any brand or flavor, I get really sick of them. So we just buy like a lot of different ones. I buy the LaCroix, I buy the Bubblies, I buy the Waterloo's, I buy, there's probably other brands I buy too. I like all of them. How do you deal with lost packages? Do the platforms help at all? Um, first of all, and I think this is like sort of the bigger answer to your question, I don't encounter a lot of lost packages. Um, over the course of a year, I might run into that like once or twice in thousands of orders. So it's a really low, it's not something I deal with a lot. I can't remember the last time I dealt with it. Um, but let's just say it happens on eBay. If it's a lost package, uh, there's nothing eBay can do. I got to refund my customer because it's my customer, not eBay's customer. Um, so yeah, I refund the, the, the customer for their purchase. And then I would put in a a package claim with either e eBay or sorry, either with the carrier. So whether it's USPS, UPS, or FedEx, I'm going to put in a claim um, for a lost package. And if the item was insured, then I would get, um, then they would send me money as long as I went through that claim process. But it happens so rarely. It's one of those questions that people, as they're first getting started, they're so worried about packages getting lost. In my experience, it just happens like less than a, Less than one tenth of one percent of the time. I mean, it's such a rare occurrence in my experience. But let me know down below in the chat. Do you get a lot of those? Do you get a lot of lost packages? Uh, happy to intro. I taught my VA myself. Nice. I don't know what. Um, maybe I missed something there. Sorry. Happy to intro. Tell my. Thank you, Susie. I'm not really sure what we're talking about. I haven't had any yet. 
Thank you for sharing the why, Big Mama. Great job. You've been live for 90 minutes, TikTok told me. Take a, don't forget to take a break. Happens at big USPS locations like Denver. I, I started my resale business. I ran it for two years in Denver, and I didn't really run into um, that. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying maybe I just had really good luck. The first two, what was it? The first, yeah, the first two years of my business, I was in, I lived in downtown Denver. Julie, thank you so much for your order on Poshmark. LL Bean going out the door. Really cool LL Bean too, a flannel hoodie. I like it. We get a Harley shirt. This is another bought item that I bought on Whatnot. Undisclosed flaws. Cool shirt. Big Harley hit on the front, big Harley hit on the back. But it had two holes right in the front in the center, like right here, whole hole. And somehow this whatnot seller didn't notice two holes that were right here and here. Interesting. Anyway, I listed this. It sold 24 hours later because I priced it at like 10 bucks and somebody sent me an offer of seven. And I accepted it. It's a flawed item. Let's get it out the door. Get most of my money back anyway on this and move on. This is going to... Uh, Alessandro, thank you, Alessandro. It's a cool shirt. Some people don't care if they buy a t-shirt. It's got a couple little holes in it. And again, I described it really well in the item description, in the item title, and close up photos of the flaws. And gave somebody a good deal. So but I'm still gonna move this flawed stuff too. Somehow they didn't notice the two holes in the front center of the shirt. Hmm. Interesting. Do you reach out to them on whatnot? No, I just cross them off, off my list. It's that easy. What would my dollar move on? Thank you, Alessandro. Nice little Harley shirt there. All right, next up, we got a pair of Levi's. These sold. Oh, what day did I list these? I think he sold in like two days. Levi's 5.11. I listed these sometime last week and they sold on Saturday. Levi's 5.11. I tell you all the time, I do better with jeans that are non-blue. So these brown ones sold nice and quick. Even though 5.11 or the, the size is 36.29, usually bigger sizes do better for me. But you lose about three a year and it takes so much time to sort out. Yeah, it's a pain, but it happens so rare. Do you reach out to whatnot? If I've ever said, send stuff like that, please tell me you got it. Is there protection against that if I shop on whatnot? Yeah, if you put in a like a if you like put in a claim or whatever with whatnot, I think they're gonna have their buyers back. I've never done it, but I imagine that they would have people's back for that. Uh, I'm gonna put these jeans in a padded flat rate envelope. A lot of people don't know this about Poshmark. Their deal with the post office is that you can actually use uh, flat rate uh, packaging to ship out your Poshmark stuff to. So you can use these padded flat rate envelopes. I use them for jeans oftentimes. They just fit nicely in there. These are going out to Christine. Thank you, Christine. Christine bought these 511s. I think these were on a best offer. Yeah, best offer, $20 on these. I think I listed them for like 24 bucks or something. Best offer, 20 bucks. Out the door to Christine. Thanks for supporting my tiny little business. Still got two more Poshmark orders. One of them I got to do a search and rescue mission for. I didn't write down what bin I put that in. So I won't do that. We'll ship one more order after this. And if anybody wants to get in some, some fresh coffee or some rad merch before they log off for today, I can get that shipped out. I'll ship it out. Any orders at chrisatpeak.com or on TikTok shop, we ship those out with a big dose of gratitude right here on the live. Just want to get some fresh coffee. We'll get you out today. We'll get you out right now. This is going to Christine. Thank you, Christine. Out the door, a pair of Levi's jeans. Good time of year to be selling Levi's. All right, we got a Brooks Brothers. Big size, 1734, which measures like an XL. I think this is the right one. I just want to double check. Yep, made in the USA, red. So this is an older Brooks Brothers. There's not a lot of cachet to Brooks Brothers vintage. Um, this is a vintage Brooks Brothers piece, but nobody really cares. Um, Certain vintage items just become old shirts. So this is an old Brooks Brothers shirt, even though it's vintage. You can call it vintage all you want. 
but there's really not cachet to certain brands, especially when it's like there, there's no vintage vibes to this shirt. It's just kind of like you could buy a brand new shirt that's exactly like this, but you can see that made in the USA makers logo 1734 on this sold for I'll tell you the price in a second here. Sold for $18 best offer. They usually list those for like 21 bucks. Best offer, 18 bucks. This is going in one of these tie back envelopes. Poshmark shipping is so easy. So what happened this weekend? I think the Poshmark beat eBay on the weekend. Let's see. We started with these. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six eBay's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven eBay's, eight Poshmarks. Seven eBay's, eight Poshmarks. So Poshmark on the weekend. Yeah, thank you, Amy. You won the weekend. You get yourself a nice shirt for a nice price. Brooks Brothers going out the door for 18 bucks. You don't trust government adhesive. Have you ever been to a rag house? I haven't. Have you? Selling vintage hard goods, I try to disclose all flaws. Nice. Got a Carhartt jacket at Goodwill for eight dollars. Small flaws noted. Sold for forty-five bucks. Love it. Thanks for letting me hang out while here. I wish you all many sales. Thanks, back roads. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for sending some positive vibes. Appreciate that. All right, this is the last one I'm going to ship out. I'm going to sign off for the day. Wishing everybody some good, a good day, some good sales. Gonna need two bins for today. We can make that happen. Nice weekend. Best weekend we've had in a while on both eBay and Poshmark. Grateful for that. outside some other time may the sales be plentiful how many sales going out um 15 six, 17 total sales i'm moving to southern california and i have access to some so thinking about going nice vintage designer is what i want to go after that's awesome cool yeah let me know how that goes what's up surfs hey hey second life is in the house later biggie all right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out for a little bit. Enjoyed it. Good weekend of sales. Hope you all have a great day of sales. If you're out and about, hope you find some cool stuff. And I hope the sun's shining on you. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. I don't know what time I'm going to be on tomorrow, but they'll be on sometime tomorrow. Sorry, I'm just not going to have a schedule right now. I'm just trying to sort out kind of what this, yeah, just got some stuff to work on. So I don't know when I'll be on next, but I'll be on tomorrow. One thing I do know is that 7.30 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, we're going to do a whatnot show. Here's one of the pieces I think is really fun. Little Aniche all over football print. Aniche, don't tell me it's NYC. P. Diddy pronounces it Aniche. He owns the brand. Diddy, Aniche, all over football, guys. That's one of the items. There's so much crazy stuff. Lululemon Mountain Hardware. There's some good puffer jackets in there, some good soft shell jackets, a whole lot of fleece jackets some great hiking pants, 
some cool giveaways. There's all kinds of unique stuff. There's some really cool Disney, like unique Disney stuff that you're going to want to come check out. So tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Don't miss this whatnot show. It's going to be a good one. It's a loaded show. I got 50 items already preloaded. Photos front and back. Items have been reviewed very carefully as always. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. I'll probably pop on at some point tomorrow during the day. I just, I'm not going to have a schedule probably this week, just like last week. I'll just pop on when it makes some sense, when I miss y'all. Well, I have to, I'm not sure, Kim. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, just sorry. I'm just not going to have a schedule this, this week. Just kind of intentionally trying to go without a schedule and doing what's right for my business instead of just like what's right for a schedule and just kind of thinking that through and thinking that maybe there'll be a different schedule um, in coming weeks. But first, I just want to roll without a schedule and just do what makes sense for my business in any given day. And then from there, kind of reevaluate and think, what does a schedule look like? What makes sense for me now? I built this schedule around 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, November the 2nd of last year, right? A lot's changed in my business since November the 2nd of last year. So just want to take some time to kind of figure out what makes sense moving forward. I'm not sure. I've been doing those live thrifts since February, you know, um, one, one o'clock PM Eastern time on Tuesdays. Is that going to make sense moving forward for my business anymore? I'm not sure, but we're going to decide. I'm going to try to mix things up the next, maybe in the next couple of weeks and just kind of see what lands and see what I, yeah, see what new kind of ideas come up. And I, in order to come up with new ideas, you need to get out of like normal habits and routines, right? Break free from that. So you can give space for new ideas. So that's what I'm doing right now. It's kind of intentional and I'm sorry that I don't have a schedule for you right now, but I think you'll be fine. And uh, we'll work it out in something cool. You know, this is the idea is to always be like moving forward and thinking ahead and, and changing things up and doing what's best for the business. And part of that business is doing what's best for y'all and teaching and bringing new ideas and and uh, helping you grow your business, bringing you some positive vibes and all that stuff. What will I do, Nick Smith? I know, I know, I know, Nick. You can uh, you can message me with the pool photos, and that uh, we'll go back and forth on that. Wishing everybody an awesome day. I'll see you at some point tomorrow, definitely 7.30 p.m. Eastern time for the Whatnot Show. Thanks, everyone, for all your support. Peace. Neighbors walking his dogs.